Alright guys, how's it going? Now initially, I did promise a few Serpent Visual scripting tutorials, so I'm going to deliver one today. Now if you don't know what this application is, the link is in the description down below. Highly recommend you buy it, to be honest. Not because I'm shilling for it, it's just pretty damn epic. Now, this is a very basic tutorial showing you how to set up a variable, and it's mainly for the guys in the Discord, to be honest, but you're more than welcome to follow it along. I'll put the actual script on my Gumroad page if you want to download it. Now, on the grand scale of life, it's not the best add-on in the world, <laughs> but it just lets me quickly rename an object. So what I can do here is I can press the shortcut key, you can see here, quick rename. It'll also give me the name of the object, so it's called change name, and I'm just going to call this cube and hit OK. And you'll notice in the outliner that it automatically changes the name. Now, is this any quicker than double clicking here and calling this cube to? I don't think so. But like I mentioned, it's a great way to show you how to set up variables in Serpents, and I'll just walk you through it to be honest. Now, this is a basic node setup, so you're literally talking 10 nodes maximum. And I'm going to start from the beginning, so I do apologise, but I'd just like to kind of walk everybody through it from the beginning. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to actually set up a new node tree, and I'm going to quickly drop down a key map node. Now, for obvious reasons, I would like to key map this, so what I'll do is I'll press Shift and A, S to search, and I'll search for a key map. Now what it does here on an initial startup is it drops down a kind of template for you. I might ask the developer to stop that because it's a bit annoying to be honest. But it's a nice template just to get you started. So this is the key map node. Now obviously what I need to do here is add in a shortcut. And we have a few options here in terms of where would you like the add-on to actually work. And I'm just going to make it in any space for the moment. Now I'm going to make it shift, control and let's make the keyboard shortcut M. And that's us, we've pretty much set up a key map for the add-on. Excellent. So the next thing I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to create an operator. So I'll press Shift and A, S, and I'll search for Create, and I'll drop down a Create Operator. Now I'm going to make this a pop-up, just like the example. So let's make it a pop-up. And it's always good to kind of start labelling very early on. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm just going to call this Quick Rename. And I'm just going to give it a quick description. You know yourself, when the further down the line you go with nodes, it gets more complicated. So I'm just going to call this rename object. And that's us. We've essentially created an operator. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a display text. So I'll press Shift and A, S to search. I'll search for display text. And you can see here we have a few different options. I'm going to take the pop-up and I'll plug this into the layout. And then we'll start working on what it's going to actually execute. So, it's very easy to be honest, if I drop down a run operator, now run operators pretty much do everything, <laughs> it's a run operator. So shift and A, S to search, and I'll search for a run operator, and I'll plug this into the execute. Now we could use our own custom operator, but I'm just going to use the Blender internals. And this is the great thing about it, it pretty much pulls anything from the API. So what we're looking for here is item, rename, outliner. Now in terms of the context, I'm going to change this to Outliner because obviously this is where we're kind of working. So the next thing I'm going to add is a set object data properties. And it's pretty much exactly what it says here. It's going to set the object data properties. So I'll search for set, you can see here. And I'm going to take the execute. I'll plug this into the execute. So this is where most of the work actually gets done here. And it's the data block. So what does this mean? Well, I need to be able to tell Blender this is the active object and it's very easy to do. So I can drop down an object context and you can see here it gives us a whole bunch of different options. And the one that I'm mainly interested in is the active object. And I'll just plug this into the data block. And you can see here it's already gave me a filter. And there's a whole bunch of things we can actually pipe directly into. Now it's kind of good if you have some basic knowledge of how the Blender API works. It's always good just to check the documents, but I already know we're looking for the name. And we'll just hit name and we'll hit the plus sign and this will give us an additional node. Now this is where we need to generate a variable and this is the kind of whole point of the tutorial if I'm honest. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press shift A, S to search and I'm going to search for a string variable. Now string is essentially text. So there we go, string variable, I'll put it up here and I'm going to call this object rename and we'll just give it a quick description of variable of name and we'll leave the default value at zero. So in terms of the set object data properties, 
I have a name here and I could enter something manually but I want to use a string variable which will technically work with the display text. So the first thing that I'll actually do is I'll actually search for a get variable. And you can see here, get variable, we'll drop it down, object rename variable, which is essentially this, object rename, and I'll plug this into the name. Now how do I display this variable? Well, if I go to the display text, change this to custom, you can see here, object rename. So before I do anything else, what I need to remember is the key map has not been set to the operator. So if I actually come back to the key map, you can see here the quick rename operator and we'll select this and I'm going to quickly compile this and I'll just show you what it looks like initially. So the shortcut is control shift and M and you can see here quick rename and we now have a text variable that we can enter in. But we're not actually setting the text at the moment because we need to actually set the attribute. So the next thing I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to set the variable. So I'll press shift A and S, I'll look for set, set variable and we'll plug this in to the execute and we'll select the variable. So that's us pretty much set up to be honest. I'll compile the add-on, I'll hit OK, I'll select an object, I'll press Control Shift and M, and we'll call this Cube New Add-on. And we'll hit OK, and hopefully that'll rename. And that is pretty much the basics of the rename tool. Now there's a few things we can do to tart this up. If we look at the original example, you can see that it actually displays the selected object name and it's very easy to do. We can use the object context node. So I'll press Shift and A, S to search. I'll search for the object's context and you can see here active object. And what we can do here is we can actually grab the properties of the active object. So I'll drop down a get object data properties. We'll take this into the active object and we'll search for the name. Now you can already tell there's loads of options here. So doesn't necessarily need to be restricted to the name. I'll take in the name, I'll hit the plus sign, and what I can do here is I can just plug this into display text. And the next time when I compile the add-on, it should hopefully display the name of the object. And that is pretty much the basics of grabbing a variable inside of the Serpens add-on. Now, to be honest, if you have any idea how visual nodes work, you'll be able to smash this compared to what I can do. But it's a nice script. Now, one thing that I might warn you about is, even though the object isn't selected, it technically is, <laughs> and it's stupid Blender. So you can see here, if I actually drop the tool, it's still technically selected. So when I run the actual add-on, and I call this rename, it'll actually rename what was last selected. So just keep that in the back of your mind. But you can actually work around this by using the get selected node, and you can actually tell it specifically, hey, grab this mesh, and then do this. Do me a favour, guys. Please support third party developers, the link is in the description down below, it is an affiliation link, I get a small kickback. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me in mode, you know what to do, take care.